post day announcement that I am happy to say and why not drive it with the one that we are going to talk about right here yep it is time GM has officially decided to bring back the Hummer it's official but not just any Hummer this is called the Hummer EV General Motors have been really trying to push their way to get into the electric car market so and they're trying to get into the big trucks so what they were trying to do is try to be part of the electric vehicle market or the EV market and there was a lot of rumors spurring around saying that Hummer was coming back but as of yesterday they officially announced that Hummer is coming back but not just any Hummer this is called the Hummer EV and it'll be under the brand GMC so we're looking at probably limited numbers of it I think they were trying to tease a lot of people with the AT4 oh, family from GMC so like for the AT4 they were coming out with the Sierra AT4 now the Acadia AT4 Terrain AT4 and now the Yukon AT4 so they were teasing it up a little bit to introduce a company that everyone remembers back in 1992 when it was first introduced to the people before I got bought out by General Motors so this is great it's coming back so let's talk about stats about this one this was introduced by GMC and their kind of trailers thing so I think we're gonna see more of it coming from the Super Bowl ad so we hear that it's gonna produce up to a thousand horsepower that's a lot of power depending on how the motors are set up and 11,500 pound-feet of torque that's big and they they're bragging about it and I'm looking at the bottom of it they said estimated GM estimated under three seconds for 0 to 60 time the reason for 0 to 60 time is because of that 11,000 pound 11,500 pound-feet of torque going to be involved anytime whenever you hear like 0 to 60 times those are from torque because the torque numbers when the torque number is so high you're going to have a very quick off the line times so that's what we're seeing what it looks like we're not sure but they said and announced that it's going to be fully revealed on May 20th of this year of 2020 so if you see the ad it says 5 2020 so prepare for that and that's when it's going to be introduced the new Hummer and a new future now what's gonna feature most likely this there's not gonna be this gonna be like that little push button transmission obviously because everyone at most of the new body on frame SUVs like the 2021 Tahoe the Yukon and the Escalade is not out yet but from what I heard it's going to be like a little lever it's going to be an electronic transmission so most likely we're going to get an electronic transmission and it's going to have off-road capabilities keep in mind it's a Hummer so it's going to have things that Hummers are going to have off-road tires probably BF Goodrich tires it's going to have off-road suspension it's going to have heavy-duty springs it's going to have an, an aluminum undercarriage to protect the components that is under there so that's what is possibly going to have now everyone remembers the Hummer as the gas guzzler because of the size and the weight honest to goodness I think this was the right call for many people 
to go for 1,000 horsepower and 11,500 pound-feet of torque. That was good because this fuel efficiency will be canceled. This fuel efficiency will be dealt with because when you have high horsepower and high torque number on a vehicle like this, like on this 2008 H2, I'm averaging 12 miles to the gallon. That engine is running on an L92 engine that is producing 393 horsepower, but it produces close to 400 pound-feet of torque. So, when you have to low torque numbers, you're not gonna get it, make it have pretty good fuel efficiency. It's going to be like eight miles to the gallon. I'm averaging 12 because I'm not driving like a jerk. See, when people drive poorly, they will get bad, bad, bad gas mileage. Sorry, I'm jumbling myself up. So, it's important to have high power numbers and high torque numbers in order to fulfill the standards of the fuel efficiency. I know on the 2015 to 2020 Escalades and the Yukons with the 420 horsepower, it's averaging 18 miles per gallon, which is really good. But if you drive nicely and respectfully, and you can do the math on your own, you just take the odometer and then take how much gallons has been used in the vehicle and then you just divide it so odometer miles divided by the number of gallons used and then you'll determine the actual miles per gallon of how much gas has been used on this vehicle you can on this one but I'm not gonna do that right now I'm gonna save that for another video so this is what we're hearing from Hummer so possibly are they bringing back the H1 we don't know we're gonna hold it right there H2 I know everyone hates on this I'm driving one I have no issues with it and especially I'm fine with it having an LS small block this has a LS2 derivative like I said it's an L92 engine LS2 derivative engine I, if anything goes bad on this engine, I have an excuse to put an LS9 or an LS7 or an LSX376 engine on this. So, have mercy on the H2. Or you can have mercy on the H3. The H3, if you guys remember, is the only Hummer out there with an inline 5 with a 5-speed manual, okay? If you want an SUV with a manual transmission, get the H3 with a 5-cylinder. That, that's that's cool they should bring back SUVs with manual transmissions and I know everyone is gonna talk about it no one's buying manuals it's because of the sales numbers and number two people doesn't know how to drive a manual I would love to learn one as I said I said this from my last video I'm gonna say it again I would love to drive a manual car I will drive it any day just to preserve to save the manuals and it's fun to do it's enjoyable not because I want numbers I don't want to beat somebody I just want to enjoy the joy of driving you cannot enjoy the joy of driving when you have paddle shifters yes this 2008 this 2008 Hummer has manual on it it has paddle shifters on it I'll show you on a photo right here it does have the paddle shifter but it's organized in such a way that it doesn't look like a paddle shifter so we go from there now let's talk about the transmission the transmission we are not sure what it is as I said before on this Hummer EV is it possibly a single clutch transmission or is it a dual clutch and how many gears will it have is it gonna have a single gear or is it gonna have multiple gears that create that 11,500 pound-feet of torque those are the good questions we want to know and we're, we don't know until we get the reveal around May 20th so that's around four months from now and it's almost September so February March April May yeah four months so we have time so I'm sorry I'm, I'm jumbling around and 
saying a lot of this stuff. Hey, look, a GMC Den Denali behind me. What a coincidence. Hummer, GMC, goes together. They're like a family. Why not? So. Oh, boy, the time has came. I, I can't believe it. But, I don't know. I, I really would love to see the new Hummer EV. I would love to see it. So, I know. The, many of you are probably wondering, okay, I thought this is just a general talk or something like I, I'm just giving my thoughts on the new Hummer EV that's giving out. This is not like a full announcement or anything. I'm not a newscaster. I'm just a guy that likes to talk about cars and talk about the things that I enjoy. And this is one of the things that I'm deeply passionate about. I'm deeply passionate about the CTSV, the V brand and the Hummer and anything General Motors. I love LS small block engines. I've been an LS small block guy since I was a little boy. So I will never leave my LS small blocks. I have massive respect for Ford. I have massive respect for other brands. But something about General Motors is not letting me go away from it. And I have been with General Motors for a long time. So, and this is like what I enjoy doing and I'm never gonna stop doing it, so. I will talk to you guys later. I'll keep you posted about other stuff. I am going to post another video on I'm hopefully going to discuss the 2021 Tahoe Suburban Yukon and the Escalade. As soon as the Escalade comes out, I'm going to talk about all three of them. I'm, that's what I'm going to I'm planning to wait for the Escalade to come out so I can start talking about all three of them and discuss the stats on it. So until then, we're going to wait until the Escalade comes out. Then I'm going to talk about that body frame, that body on frame SUV. All three of them. That's what I'm planning to do. I posted a video a while back of, of discussing about the Chevrolet, the 2021 Chevrolet Suburban and Tahoe, and it did not go too well. And it it it, it didn't. I'll just say it didn't go too well. I'm trying again. I'm trying, trying hard again. This time, hopefully, I could get it right. And as I said before. I am open to criticism. I also give an explanation why. And you know, I'm fair game. So in the meantime, I'll let you know when I'm going to release that video. Please follow me on Twitter because I am on Twitter nonstop. If you want news, get it from me. I'm also on conversations. I'll talk about anything. So if you want to hear me active, I'm on Twitter. So until then, I'll see you guys next time.